Well, hello, this is the second of a series of videos we're making for our, our ongoing online class in inland and coastal navigation. And these are notes on the use of uh, OpenCPN. And uh, on this one, number two, I want to look about using the route tool versus the M key uh, for making uh, permanent range and bearing lines and then for advancing an LOP. That, in other words, how do we do a running fix with this type of uh, electronic charting? And then some, some other tricks on um, uh, marking buoys and putting rings on them and so on. So let's, let me remind uh, what we looked at in the last video. And there was a, there is a series one to take a look at first. But there is an M key. If I want to measure like the width of this, uh, the width of the separation zone. Here's a separation zone. What's the width of that? I can just hit the M key and go across. And you see it's about 0.85 miles. And so that's a, that's a powerful tool. But if I want to draw a line like a, like a bearing, like I did a bearing to this rock here, something like that, and I do an M, I can draw a nice bearing, but I can't, it won't stay. So I, to do that, we use a route key. We're going to use this uh, route tool. So let me actually, let me back up and just show you what the route tool does in the first place. It, it makes routes. So suppose, uh, let's say, suppose our boat's down here in Port Angeles, and we want to go to Victoria. So we could just start here and make a route. Click that tool. You click here somewhere. We come out to here. And then uh, go across to Victoria. Let's see. And then go, say, into here. Escape. All right, so there's our route. And then you could go and go uh, right, right click it. Right click it, it'll turn orange. And you say properties. Now we can just say uh, uh, Port, uh, Port Angeles, uh, Port Angeles to Victoria. That's a, the Port Angeles to Victoria, and, you, and this you could fill in or not fill in, uh, you know, BC, something like that. Then we could say this is just I'm. This is not the discussion of how to use this tool. We, there's a lot more to say about that. But let's say we're going to go 5.9 miles. Let's say we're going to leave tomorrow morning, four o'clock. We're going to, I mean, on the fourth, we'll leave at seven, uh, seven a.m something like that so then what you see here is you know it's going to tell you the total trip at seven and a half is two hours 40 minutes you're going to arrive at this time it tells you the time you're on each leg of the trip you know and so forth and so that's that's what the route tool is intended for and then you can export this this is a route plan this is a very valuable thing you can ex actually export this as a gpx file and then load it right into your gps and so on so this is a powerful tool even if you're not using e-charts for navigation it's perfectly logical to set up your long route let's say you're going some complicated thing up th up through these islands then uh, you would lay out your route with this tool export it to your gps and on your working gps on your boat and then you're you got all that, or just follow along on a computer. Okay, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I want to just delete that. Okay, so, ah, I'm having trouble here. Right click, delete. Okay, good, yes. Now, so what I want to do is, uh, so um, if I want to draw a permanent bearing line, like let's just say I did a bearing fix I could do a bearing fix. Let's say I did a bearing fix off of Otter Point, and then that would be, um, uh, let me just, so I could just say, now I can't exactly do it this way, but you could say my boat's out here somewhere, and I, I measured a bearing to here was uh, 319M, right? So I knew I was somewhere on this line at 319M. Now that's going to stay. I just did the route clear. And then let's say over here, what did I do over here? Let's say at this point I took somehow a bearing, you know, to this monument point over here, and that's like that, and something like that. Okay, so now those are two bearing lines. This means that I'm when I was on, you know, this is let's say I did it fairly quickly, or I'm moving very slowly, right? And so I took this bearing, and it was uh, 058 magnetic. And then I took this bearing. 
318 magnetic, that means my boat's here. And so I've, did, I've plotted a bearing fix, something like that. So that's the way that works. But now suppose you want to do a, um, and the way you would do that, of course, the way you would do that, what is this here? This is uh, uh, 58 degrees. Let's just say, uh, let me delete that for a minute. Let's just see, uh, yes, let's just say delete that. Let me put up this tool here. Where is it? Oh, okay. Um, let me go up here. Okay, I've got to be sure I'm on the same scale and don't change the scale. Okay, so I could just, this would be like my parallel rulers. And I could go on here and um, set this to... Um, well, wait a minute. This got to go in the center. That's good. I'm just I'm just kind of mocking up a pair of parallel rulers, and it's 58 magnetic. So there's 30, 40, 50, 58 magnetic. You know, something like that. So I've got my parallel rulers set to 58 magnetic, and then I just move the parallel rulers down. Uh, move the parallel rulers down till they hit that where were we monument point like that. So now that's my, whoops, excuse me, that's my parallel rulers like that. Then I would get out my pencil, which would be, I'm just mocking that up here, and my pencil would draw in this line. So there, that's, uh, used, that's sort of the analogy of doing it with a, with a parallel rulers. Uh, let me hide that for the moment. Uh, pixel stick, uh, quit, okay. So let's look now at how you might do a running fix, a running fix. Let's just say I've got a bearing, uh, a bearing to this uh, light here. So I could do a bearing, here's a bearing to that light, right? Let's say, so that light was bearing, uh, what's that bearing? 297M. So I did a 297M, and then I just plot that. And that's at a given time. I could write on here 1205 or a certain log reading, odometer reading. But somewhere at 1205, I was somewhere on that line. I don't know where. Okay, so let's say then I go, let me just see what the scale is here. Uh, what's this, like uh, three miles? Okay, three miles escape. Then let's say that after I take this bearing, I sail 3.0 miles in direction, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 040. No, uh, let's see, what do we got? 20. Well, here, let me just measure it. What is this direction? Uh, like 0, 025 magnetic. Okay, so here we did. We took a bearing to this lighthouse, I mean this light, and I know we're on this line. I can just draw it in. Then I sailed three miles in direction 050, and then I took another bearing to this light. I'll go to another tool here and draw it in, and uh, it looks like that. Okay, so what is that bearing? Okay, yes. Whoops, escape. All right, so there's my second bearing line. That's now 255. So down here at, at, at 1205, say 1205, I measured this. It was 297. I sailed 3.0 miles in direction 025M, and then I ended up on this line, and that is um, uh, bearing 255. So I just have to find out uh, where, where I am. And the way you would do that in, with the regular parallel rulers is you just take any point, any point on this line here, and then mark off what you did. You did three miles, uh, three miles at 2025. Two now here's a trick. Let's see that 18, that's eight, 19 degrees, 20, 21, 22, 23, 12, 24. Bang, 24. As soon as it changed 25, I stop. Okay, so that's 25. So that is three miles in that direction. So clearly I wasn't here. I've got to be somewhere further down here. In fact, it looks like I'm going to have to take, uh, let me just take, I'm going to have to bring that line out a little further. Okay, when you're drawing your LOPs originally, you don't know where you are. Okay, but then, th so then what the technique is, this is the three miles. So if you were doing this with old-fashioned, not old-fashioned, traditional parallel rulers, 
you would go in, let me turn on my so-called parallel rulers again, and I would just lay my parallel rulers along this line. Uh, let's see, okay. I, I lay my parallel rulers along this line, and then I move the parallel rulers up to here, right? So I was here at, here is at 12 o'clock, 12.05, then here's three miles later in that direction. So I'm just dragging that. Basically, you can think of it as just bolting that LOP to the boat and driving it up here, right? So that's an advanced LOP. And here's where I was at that time. So here's my fix. I, well, then you'd go in with your tool. Where is this thing here, my tool? And then you would just draw in the advanced, oops, excuse me. You draw in the advanced LOP here, and then no escape, and then you could uh, move your parallel rulers off the table. And there's your whoa, a little bit tricky. Um, there's the fix right here. This is the fix. It's the intersection of the final line, which is that one, and the uh, advanced line, which is this one. Okay, so that's the way that works with the traditional parallel rulers. Now, um, if we were doing this with, um, if we were doing, let's say, delete, delete. If we were doing, yes, if we're, if we're doing this as all with our tools, we could just, um, we could do it a different, let's say we've got this line, one line of position here, another line of position here, then we know we went three miles at 250. And uh, how do I draw that a different way using my just tools here? So I can go up here and grab this tool, make any, take any point on this line, and go up 3.0 miles in direction 25. There's, there's 2539. Yeah, there's something like that at 25 right there. Now there, um, oh, I've got to know. Okay, I gotta escape here. What was this bearing? What was my original bearing? 297. Okay, so I've gotta go. Um, uh, let me do it again, uh, because okay, here's a trick. When you're moving, when when you're drawing one of these lines, proper. Let me d let me show you something. Okay, delete. When you're t taking one of these lines and you go and you mark it, you see that's showing very nicely where everything is. It's live and dynamic. It's live and dynamic. You can see it. So 63, 4, 5, 6. But once you drop it, you know, once you drop it, okay, and say escape, now it's not dynamic anymore. I don't know. Unfortunately, that is not dynamic anymore. So uh, I don't know. It'd be nice if it were still dynamic. But so what you do is just delete it and start over again. So I'm going, uh, this was 297. So you could do your running fix this way. You pick any point on here, go up your, uh, go up the direction 225 two at 3.0, 25, 3.0, let's see, it's right, right about there, right about there. Then turn and go to 297, 297. And then just run back down that line backwards like that. Bang. Escape. So here now is the way that I advanced without grabbing parallel rulers or anything. I just grabbed that and, and your fix is right here. Right at this point. Okay. So that's that technique. Let me get rid of the pixel stick. Quit that. And let me just see what I want to do. Permanent LOP. We did a... We did a fix both ways. Okay, now the last thing, or one of the th other things I want to show is, suppose, and where did I, let's say, here's a point I wanted to, let's say this is a latitude and longitude I want to plot. I want to plot a point at this air, at, right at this point, 48, and it's somewhere near Rocky Point. Okay, so I would just, and Rocky Point is somewhere on this, Rocky, every place has a rocky point, by the way. But anyway, so here we are, rocky point. So somewhere in this area is where I want to put that exact buoy. But rather than just hunt around like this, you can do a trick. You just go in here, drop a mark, right-click the mark, go to properties, and then here's where, and I, had, I copied it, so I'm just going to do command-paste it, and that's what I want. So this is all nice with degrees and marks and everything, but this program is really smart. You can just copy this part and put it here. 
Command V, and then copy this part, Command C, and put it here, Command V, and then say OK. And, and then just double check that everything's right, you see. And then, sure enough, it did just what we wanted to do, okay? So that's a way you can put a mark somewhere. And, and suppose you don't want, you want a little more prominent, you can go to properties. Here's where you change the icon. If you want some knockout little deal there, there's something like that. And then often we'll have occasion for doing piloting. We want to, let's say I'm, I'm doing a, a lot. Okay, I got this right here. Okay, yes. Um, an escape. And I want to draw a distance out here that's exactly, like I could bring my mouse out and measure this. But let's say I want to, I want to bring a line out here that's 1.1 mile exactly. So you could go in here, right click this, properties, go to description, no, extended, extended, number of rings, zero. And that's one. And then uh, let's say I want 1.03, right? 1.03 miles. Okay, boy. So now I, I've got a distance out here. It's exactly 1.03. So that's, a, that's just a trick. That's just a trick. So what's else in this lesson two? Uh, maybe I'm going to stop here on that and then come back and do tides and currents and things like that in another one.